Brownfields projects are catalytic projects. You've got this vacant blighted piece of property that just sits there. All of a sudden, something's happening with it. And it's becoming a, a focal point. It's becoming a way for that community to coalesce, whether it's through jobs or through a community center or a baseball field, or even something as simple as a park. It really is becoming that amenity that is making the whole area more li livable. And it does draw in sort of beginning to realize that, you know, if we can do it on this piece of property, we can do it on that piece of property. Environmental issues have been part of my life from as long as I can, as I can remember. My father made it a point of being part of the Nature Conservancy uh, back in, in Georgia, um, back, in, back in the time when we would walk into the Nature Conservancy meeting and he would be the only black face there. Now, when I got to Portland and I started seeing the real clear discrepancies that took place because of Oregon's history in terms of racism, um, and you can see that so obviously, uh, in, in this area. We started looking at how many contaminated sites there were in legislative districts. And in this district, there were 147. And that was my, my house district, not my Senate district. So in the Senate district, it was easily 300. One of the things I'm very proud of is that I came in with a bill that called for a, a new system so that if you found out that there was contamination on a site, you could find out what was, the, what was contaminating it. And if you cleaned that up, then you were no longer going to be liable for anything else that was found. I've been doing that kind of work for some time. Now, this site here, this was a gas station that the Deltas, the, the Black Sorority, owned for quite a while. They couldn't get money to repair it. They couldn't get loans from the bank. They couldn't get loans from PDC, which was the development corporation in, in Portland. They couldn't get those loans because there was a real clear uh, problem in terms of race. All along Albina here, uh, this, this street was mostly owned by African-American businesses, but they, because of the way that the, the banks were handling things, they couldn't get loans. And that was something that had been going on for decades. When I found out about uh, the Delta's problem, I decided, you know, let's see what I can do. And as soon as we started talking about it and it became very, very clear that first of all, many of the homes had been sold, many of the businesses had been sold along Albina from black, by black families to white uh, owners, and suddenly they were able to get loans. And I started saying, hey, this is not okay. Uh, we've got to do something about that. And the Deltas were pushing it, and I was pushing it, and a whole group of folks said, we've got to get something done. It changed, and the Deltas managed to get this repaired and cleaned up. I think tying it to the community, and asking what the community wants, which is what they did here. What does the community want? And then deciding what you can, how you can tie that to the people who are in the community in terms of jobs and economic development and economic security. So this is a success in the community that would not otherwise be there. And it makes a big difference when you can see something that actually works, when you can see that when policies are developed, they actually can work for everyone. That, that makes a huge difference. So that's what you see, you see here, and uh, it, feels, it feels really good.